Hello, class. It's just me, Mr. Wee. Um, <clears throat> I just want to continue off from um, 3.5, some that we didn't actually get to finish in class together. So we were talking about uh, graphing inequalities, but the one thing that we really didn't talk about was this. So why don't you guys begin uh, uh, writing down these notes really quick, and maybe you can pause, but after you've you've done so, um, please unpause and let me explain what you just wrote. Okay. So before, let me see if I can uh, grab some old notes really quick. Let's see, so go ahead and pause and take down some notes. Before, this is what you drew, or this is what you had. You had graphing inequalities, and you had situations where you could have um, an equation that is either greater or equal to y, or it could be the other way around. y is greater than or equal to x squared uh, plus 2x plus 4. And really, two scenarios could happen. You had a situation where the parabola you shade underneath the parabola or within the parabola. And sometimes you might even have a situation where this might happen. The parabola points down. And you can either shade within the parabola or out the parabola. It was really simple. And one more thing that I didn't bring up was if you had a situation where you have y and it was just less than, it wasn't less than or equal to, but it was less than the equation, this line, don't worry about what it says, this line could be shaded upper here, but if it was only a situation that was less than or equal to, or it was just less than, or less than or greater than, this would be dashed. This would be a dashed line with shading below or above, meaning that you're only looking at the points either like below or above and not the actual points that are on the equals, that are equal to the points on the parabola. But this one, however, what I just showed you is a completely different situation because if you look very closely, it's not exactly the same thing. On this side, what if... Instead of setting it equal to zero, you had it either less than zero or equal to zero. What you're basically saying is what points, uh, what points, if you set your equation um, not equal to zero, but less than zero or greater than zero, where are the points that give me, uh, where are all the coordinates where if you plugged it into this equation, this uh, x squared plus bx plus c, this equation, will where will they be? less than if y was equal to zero. Okay, so remember this is y is equal to, but let's say it's actually set it equal to a number. Before, it was different. You were saying points that were greater than or less than y, but here it's specifically if y was equal to zero. Okay, well, there's four different scenarios that might happen. So there's kind of like four ways to look at it. <clears throat> The top half is if you have 0 is greater than ax squared plus bx plus c, you might have two things happen. If your a, remember, if your a is or if your a is positive, if you have a positive opening up parabola, the a, the number in front of x squared, is positive. It opens up, and if if it's less than 0, then these all these points in between this x-intercept and this x-intercept um, the two x-intercepts uh, and where uh, this point, is, or I'm sorry, where the vertex is, and basically all the points in between from the x-intercept, um, nothing above, but every, not everything below, but just the ones that are kind of like within the parabola. These are the only points. These are the only coordinates where when you, if you plug it into this equation, right, it, or, um, these are the only x values, basically, all the only x values if you plug it into this equation, this left side would be less than zero. If your parabola pointed down, the best points of reference are the x-intercepts. This is if your, if your a is negative, it's less than zero, then the only points that would make this side less than zero, not y, but zero, it would be only these points that are shaded. This scenario, this paints it to where... Um, 
So this is really hard to memorize all these for, but you're going to have to kind of memorize it unless you can make better sense of it. Um, essentially, everything has to do with where the x-intercepts are. So in this case, it's the opposite thing, or if it's the opposite situation. So if your equation was greater than zero, okay, it'd be the parabola and all the points on the outside of the parabola and above the x-intercept. So basically, you see these this point pointing outwards here and this point, this x-intercept pointing outwards here. It's pretty much all the points extending from the x-intercepts going in opposite directions and above. It's all shaded except within the, you don't shade within the parabola. Again, this is if your, if your parabola is positive, your parabola is negative, meaning your A is negative, but you want all the values to be greater than zero. Or if you want all the values that were, or all the x values, all the x coordinates where if you plugged it into this equation, you'd get the left side greater than zero, or this side basically greater than zero, then it would only be the points above. So you can look at it like this. This bottom half is if you want your x values, when you plug it into the equation, to be greater than zero, they're always going to be above the x-intercepts, okay? But... It really depends because if you have an, a positive parabola, they're all the points going to be above, but they're all going to be uh, above and uh, outside. Opposite is if you have a negative parabola that opens downwards, it's going to be above the x, uh, the above the x-axis, but in between your um, x-intercepts. Okay. And then down over here is if you if you want all the points that are less than zero, all the x coordinates that'll give me less than zero, they're always below the x axis, but it's the opposite situation. Now, if you have a positive parabola, they're all the points going to be below the x intercepts and below the x axis, but it's going to be within the parabola, okay, and not on the outside. And then in this situation here is a point down, but now it's on the outside and below, okay. So both are below, both are above here, okay? So a lot of things to consider. Um, the first thing I want you to do is to try this problem. Zero is greater than x squared plus 5x plus minus 6. The first thing is you're going to basically graph this. You're going to graph it like you normally do. So my suggestion is why don't you graph the vertex, okay? The lowest or the highest point of the graph. So you have a few options. You can write this down. I use the um, negative b over 2a, the negative b over 2a, and then that's how you find the x-coordinate for the vertex. So I plugged in negative 5 divided by 2 times a is technically 1, okay? And that's negative 5 over 2. That's going to be, remember, the vertex, though, um, in this case, this is my vertex, or this is my parabola. It will kind of go up and down. The vertex is going to be the lowest point because my A, um, my A is going to be positive, and it's greater than zero, okay? So that means I'm definitely going to have one of these two situations. A is greater than zero or A is greater than zero, okay? Um, also, I can already predict that zero, it looks like I have an equation where zero is going to be greater than this guy. So I am expecting uh, this situation where zero is, I know it's kind of the the order looks reversed, but it's still the same thing. Zero is still greater than uh, whatever the equation is. So I'm expecting sort of this situation, I bet. Okay, that's kind of what I'm betting. But let's graph it to see what it looks like. Okay, so again, the vertex is a point. It's a X and Y point. I only found the value for my x. So how do I find the y? Um, you can plug it back into the equation. 1 times x squared plus 5x minus 6. I know that my x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So I will plug it into where my um, equation is with the x values. So it's going to be negative 5 over 2 squared plus 5 times negative 5 over 2 minus 6. And then I have this where if it's negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2, if you think about it, it's negative 5 times negative 5, that would be positive 25, and then the denominators will uh, multiply 2 times 2, that's going to be neg that's gonna be positive 25 over 4. This is a situation where the whole number on the outside is going to multiply to the only the numerator here. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25 over 2, the, new, the denominator stays the same, and then you're just going to subtract 6, okay? And then the key is you want to get them all to have the same denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by 4 
t over four. So that way, this could be a, um, a fraction where it's some number divided by four. And it has to be a number that I can't just divide by. I can't just six times one over four. I can't, that would change the value. I have to uh, multiply the six times four divided by four because anything divided by itself is essentially one. So six times four over four is essentially six times one. Okay. It, it's not, you're not changing the actual value of six. And then over here, I want to get this denominator to be uh, the greatest or um, the, uh, what is it? The, the lowest common multiple. So I want it, everything I want to be four. So I think you have to multiply this times two over two. So that way I can get the bottom before, but uh, so I have to multiply the bottom by two, but whatever I multiply the bottom by, I have to multiply the top. So that's gotta be two. So that's gonna be, so it's gonna come out to be like this, 25 over four minus 50 over four minus 24 over four. And then in total, you're gonna get negative 49 over four. So my coordinate is going to look like this, negative five over two comma negative 49 divided by four. That's the vertex. Another way of thinking about it is if you put that in the calculator and you put in negative 5 divided by 2, that's negative 2.5. And then uh, if you put this in the calculator, negative 49 divided by 4, that's negative 12.25. Okay? So that is the vertex. That is the coordinate for the lowest point on this graph. If it was a negative number in front of the x squared, this would be the opposite case where the parabola would be flipped upside down and it would be the highest point. Oh, sorry about that. I guess my phone there. Okay. So that's one way of finding the vertex. Another way of finding the vertex is if you use your calculator. So let's kind of discuss here. And so let's, we want to graph this here x squared plus 5x minus 6. We want to graph it like we normally would. So let's turn on our calculator. Oops. So hopefully you have a calculator at home. I already have something there. I'm going to clear it and I'm going to put in x squared arrow over to the right plus 5x minus 6. So you have another option of just graphing this and finding out what my d or uh, my vertex is going to be. Let's zoom out. I'm going to press that once. It's going to zoom out, okay? Um I don't really like the way this looks. You can keep it that way, but uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to change the window a little bit. I'm going to say, uh, you know, I want to shorten the minimum uh, points. is going to be negative 10. Um, I think this will be at most 10. So my x value, my x axis is going to be a little bit smaller, but, you know, I do like the, the heights. I'm going to say this is negative 30. And keep that 40. The scales are good. So let's see. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I like the way my window is. You can adjust your window however you want and play with that. But I'm going to trace. And here's one way where you're not going to get full credit, but you can kind of estimate where the vertex is. Okay. But the best way to do it is per second. I think it's going to be calc. Put in the minimum point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set like two kind of like boundaries, like a left boundary and a right boundary to kind of nail what's the lowest point between those two boundaries. So I'm going to put in a left boundary like over here. I know my, my, my lowest points around here. So I'm going to go way to the left and put a left wall or left boundary there. Okay. So that's, I have this little arrow saying this is the left boundary. You can imagine like a giant wall here saying in between here, and then I'm going to make a right boundary. So I'm going to go to the right. I know my lowest point's right around here, but I'm going to go to the right of it, way to the right of it, not too far, but enough. So in between from here and here, I want the calculator to determine what the lowest point, the lowest coordinate is between these two boundaries. I'm going to press enter. It's going to say guess, and there we go. It's negative 2.5 comma. Oh, it's negative 2.499999, but that rounds to about negative 2.5. And then the the y coordinate is negative 12.25. So look back on the paper over here. That's exactly what you just calculated. You can either do it by hand or you can graph it, but you have to graph it ex like uh, exact, like exactly the way I showed you on the calculator. So you have two options to do it, but you do need to graph your vertex. So on a separate sheet of paper, um, let's go ahead and graph that. So again, you have two options to find the vertex. That was two of the options. So I guess I'll be drawing it like this. So I'm going to just draw like maybe like 20 dashes for each part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, actually just 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to go up to about 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Why not? I would just keep going. And down here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to keep going down. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so it's not a great graph, but that's what I'm going to do here. So it's going to be negative 2.5. That's negative 2, and this is negative 3. So it's going to be right there. And negative 12.5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, it's about right here, roughly, okay? So I'm going to say that's the vertex. That's going to be negative 2.5 comma negative 12.25. So you need the vertex to graph this, and you need two other points. Now, normally, I would just say uh, before, I think on my previous problem, I just asked you to pick two other points and graph them. But specifically, if you remember from this these set of notes, I need to know what my x-intercepts are. So... You have a few options to find out the x-intercepts, and you might not like them, but the easiest one's going to be graphing, uh, the graphing calculator. But let me show you the ones by hand first. So the x-intercepts, you have a few options to approach this, this task of finding the x-intercepts. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so let's go back here. So the first thing, or let's see, oh, 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 that's a different set of notes. Where's my set of notes? Okay, well, I'll just... Okay, so let's see. The x-intercepts. Let's do the x-intercepts. So you have three options, okay? You can use the graphing calculator or you can do by hand, okay? So however you want to do, but um, let's see. It's good exercise to do it by hand, but let's look back. It's, again, 0 is greater than x squared plus 5x minus 6. I know it's scary to see the the greater than, but don't worry about the greater than for now. Just focus on this and solve for the x-intercepts or the roots. Another way of saying that is the roots. Hopefully that'll trigger some memories about how you can find this out. So option number one is the quadratic formula. I think that's the, the best way to do it by hand and the guaranteed way of doing it right. The quadratic formula, and that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And this will ensure that I can grab up to two roots. Sometimes you only get one. Sometimes you'll get no real roots. But this will guarantee that I can figure it out. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. b is going to be 5. c is going to be negative 6. And a is just going to be whatever's in front of x squared, which in this case is a positive 1. So let's do negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4ac. So a is 1. And uh, C is negative 6 over 2 times A. That's 1, sorry. 2 times 1, basically. It's going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 24 over 2. And I got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. And basically, that's negative 5 plus or minus 1 over 2. So I have two situations. So negative 5 plus 1 divided by 2, that's going to be negative 4 divided by 2. That will give me negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2, or in this case, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 divided by 2, and that's going to be negative 3. Okay? So those are my two x-intercepts. So meaning x-intercepts, it's going to be right on the x-axis. So... Do that right. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see here. I believe. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. So let me see if I did my math correctly. Minus. I guess. Okay, so. We can start graphing that. I'm not sure if I actually, I, I feel like I, did, I made a mistake in the math here, but let's just double check. So that's option number one is do the quadratic formula. And then here is the other option, the graphing calculator. Okay, so let's turn this on. Back on. We're back on here. Here, um, remember, I could trace, and then I can kind of guesstimate where my x-intercept here. So look, 
My x-intercept says it's negative 6. See, I suspected I did something wrong here. And that looks like it's about 1. But if I want to be absolutely certain that how I could do that is I could do second trace or calc right there where it says calc in blue. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say 0, where your y value is 0. So again, left bound. So I know my x-intercept is right about here where my cursor is. So I'm going to go to the left of it right here. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's a wall here. Oh, what happened? Come on. There's a wall here. And then go to the right of it. It needs a right boundary and a wall here. So I'm saying between this arrow and this arrow, these two arrows, is the x-intercept. Okay. Press enter. Oh, sorry. I had it. Dang it. Uh, second calc. Let's do that one more time. No, no, no. Second calc. Let's do that one more time. Go down to zero. Again, okay, to the left here, in between here, and in between here. I think you guys saw it. Okay, so that's one. Okay, so let's go back up here and let's graph this on my calc or on my uh, graph here. That's so gonna be uh, x equals one. Okay, and then at x equals, let's do second calc. Let's do the other guy. Okay, so I want to get this over here, this x-intercept, but I need a left boundary to the left of that. So I'm going to press Enter. That's to the left of the x-boundary, and let's go to the right of that below. So, so it's basically saying between these two points lies my x-intercept. I'm going to press Enter one more time for the guess. That's negative 6. So on my graph here, I'm going to go to negative 1, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and there we go. That looks like a pretty good parabola. Okay. So let's go back down here and see what I did wrong. I feel like I, yeah, let's see. Oh, let's see. I get it. I did 25 plus uh, 24. This should have been not 1, but 49. Oh, that changes things a lot. I subtracted 25 and 24, so that should have been 49. And then this should have been 7. seven 5 plus or minus 7. So 5 plus 7 should have been a positive 2 divided by 2, that's positive 1. Ooh, that's a big change. And then down here should have been negative 5 minus 7. That's negative 12 divided by 2, and that's negative 6. Ooh. So there's two ways I could have done it. Quadratic formula, which I said is the most accurate, but look at that. I made a mathematical error, but I guess if you know your calculator, you can't beat the calculator for its accuracy. So that's option 2 is doing it by the calculator. And then option number 3 is if you cannot... Remember the quadratic formula. I think this is the least intuitive way to do it, but the, to find the x-intercepts and roots, you can factor it. So the old way of factoring, the most guaranteed way of factoring it would be like this. You have x squared plus 5x minus 6. Here's what you're supposed to do. A times C over B. You're going to take uh, the A times C, which is 1 to negative 6, and 5. you got to come up with two numbers that multiply up to negative 6, but uh, add up to negative or positive five. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's six and negative one, I think. Okay. They add up to five, but, and then what you're supposed to do is you're going to rewrite that as x squared plus six x minus one x minus six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the numbers in terms of uh, what I could factor out of both of them. So I know that these are both factorable by six. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna group those together, six X minus six, and then X squared and X, you could factor out an X in both of these. Okay, and then now I'm gonna factor out, so this is factor by grouping. I don't know if you guys remember this. So this is why I think it's uh, the least liked way to do this. And then what you can do is you can factor out a common factor out of X squared and X, which is X, and then you could factor out a uh, common factor out of 6x and 6. That's 6. And then it says they both, you want to do in a way where they both end up with similar factors. This factor is of x minus 1. And this guy, 6 times a factor of x minus 1. They both share, the x and the 6 both share a factor of x minus 1. So you group the x and the 6 together. That's x, x plus 6 times x minus 1. 1 is equal to 0, so you set that equal to 0, and then you have to solve for each case here, and solve individually, x is equal to, x plus 6 is equal to 0, x minus 1 is equal to 0, and then you subtract 6 from both sides here, so you get x is equal to negative 6, 
And then over here, you have to add one to both sides to find the root, and you have x equals 1. So remember, the reason why we did this is because we found out if x equals negative 6, and you plug it into this equation here, it would be negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. And you're supposed to technically uh, plug it into this part, negative 6 minus 1, but it wouldn't matter because this is already equal to 0. 0 times whatever is in here is going to be equal to 0. The same case scenario follows here. If I set x e minus 1 is equal to 0 and I solve that x equals 1, if I plug in 1 back into this equation, it would be 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. And then you'd have to technically put in 1 into this part as well, 1 plus 6, but it doesn't matter because this part is 0 and this would make this whole thing 0. These, Thereby, these are the roots. So those are three options to find the roots. But I personally like the quadratic formula the most because I think it's best for your brain, okay? And you're going to get better at math the more you practice by hand. That's just a given fact. But practical use you can just actually be creative and as long as you know how to use your tools like your calculator here you can find the roots as well okay so there you go but hold on we're not finished this is not this graph is of uh, y is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 6 but that's not what we i'm sorry so this graph is this this is the line for this graph. However, you remember there is shading involved, okay? So let's take a look at what we're supposed to do at this point. So in your book, you're not going to like this, okay? But you need to test three points. You need to test that is a point that is in between the x-intercepts, a point that is on the outside to the left of the x-intercept and a point on the outside to the right of the x-intercept. Here's how it may look, okay? So here you can write this down as your notes just for the time being, but I made a table of the three points. I did one of negative 7, which is on the outside of the x-intercept over here. I tested x equals negative 3, which is a point in between there, and also a point um, x equals 2, which is on the outside of the x-intercept x equals 1. I plugged it into the equation. Uh, I have to plug in these uh, these numbers into the equation, x squared minus plus 5x minus 6. And then I found that this number, or this gave me that I, this gave me a statement where it said 0 is greater than 8. After I plugged in negative 7, I plugged in negative 7 into here. I found out that 0 is greater than 8. That is not true, OK? In the middle, however, I found that 0 minus, when I plugged in any number, it could have been any number in between negative 6 and 1. In fact, some people are very smart, and they just put in 0, okay? they can. But I tested negative 3. Why not? Because that's in between negative 6 and 1. And I plugged this in here, and I plugged it in, and I saw that I got a statement that says 0 is greater than a negative 12. That's true. 0 is bigger than any negative number. So, yeah, 0, that's true. That is a number that's in between these two x-intercepts. And then again, on the outside, x equals 2. I plugged When I plugged in 2 here, I got a statement that says 0 is greater than negative eight, or positive 8. That's not true. So what that tells me is that the way that this is going to look like, you're going to draw a line between here and here. And based on what we remember from this, if your 0 is greater than your equation and your parabola opens up, we should have shading between these two um, x-intercepts. And that's how your graph is going to be. It's saying that all the x-coordinates between the x-intercepts and below, but kind of stuck between um, stuck between this weird barrier between the two x-intercepts and the actual parabola drawn is all the points that make this statement 0 greater than this true, okay? No points on the outside can make that true. We saw that on the table. And in your book, it says this. This table work justifies the fact that x, okay, it's it, it, within brackets, x within brackets, okay, the x, the x values are basically all x values that are between 1 and negative 6. That's how it's written, okay? So this statement's great, but what I really want to see is this guy. I do want you to graph these guys, okay? All right, guys, that's a lot of work. You guys have to do this for the rest of the problems in 3-5. If you haven't already, this is a late video. Um, otherwise, you guys, thank you so much for listening, you guys. This is a very, very long video. and wasn't easy to listen to. You guys take care. Bye.